I've done several videos on backing up your NAS, but in this video I want to cover a free utility from QNAP that allows you to back up one or more computers either automatically, manually, or on a schedule. Today we'll cover the QNAP NetBack Replicator Backup Utility. If you want to know more about this free utility, then watch the rest of this video. The NetBack Replicator is a free utility from QNAP that unlike HBS3, installs on your client PC and allows you to back up the entire system or just certain directories in a variety of different ways. One suggestion before you start the program or set up your first job is to create a share on your NAS that will be used as your primary backup location. It just makes things a little bit easier during the configuration. You can get their utility directly from QNAP's website in their utilities section. I'll leave a link in the video description. Let's download the utility and install it. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty quick to install. Most of the default settings should work well. Once you're done with the install, the wizard will start and you should see this screen. You can click on Don't Show This Wizard again as you most likely will not need this again. Click on Start and it'll scan and show the NAS units that are on your network. Once you see the NAS, click on it and select Next. On the next screen, you'll see all the shares that are on your NAS. Select the one that you want to use, or you can create a new one by clicking the plus folder and creating a new share. I'm going to use the one I created in advance and then click next. It'll prompt you for the username and password for the share. Type that in and click OK when you're done. Remember the user has to have access to the destination location and optionally select remember the password and hit next. You'll see a summary screen showing the NAS and the share locations that you selected. Click Finish and you're taken to the initial configuration screen. From here you have a few options. The first is Instant Backup and Instant Restore, which we'll cover later in the video. The second option is to click on Advance, which is the option we'll go over, as this is where we have all the control of how and when we back up. Here you have some options. You have the Auto Backup, which allows you to set certain folders and directories that will be monitored all the time. So when you add files to what folders are being monitored, they instantly get backed up. This is really convenient when you're monitoring data folders, but not system folders. Next, you have the schedule backup, which allows you to create a schedule to back up your files without interrupting what you're doing. This is a better option when you're backing up the whole system, or if you don't want to use the auto backup wizard, which can impact performance depending on the type of hardware, network, and file size that you're using. Here you can pick the devices and folders that you want to back up. Next, set the start time and the start date of your backup schedule. And then click on frequency settings so you can set the frequency you want to use. I'm going to use the weekly and pick Monday and Thursday. Click OK when you're done. Then click on add and enable the backup. Type the password of the client PC, not the NAS. This is the admin password for the computer or the laptop that you're using so that it can access needed files as well as create an actual schedule in your system. If you did everything right, it should look something like this and the schedule will show enabled. Next, you have the instant backup, which is the same as the initial wizard, where you select what you want to back up and click on Start Backup. Now let's look at how you can restore files. Start by selecting the Instant Restore tab. You'll be given a list of users and computers that have been backed up. Drill down and select the file or folders that you want to restore. Looking over to the right, you can choose to restore the default location or to a selected path. If you're replacing corrupt or missing files, then you can leave the default location. Or if you want to review the files first, then select a temporary location to restore your files to and where you can review them first before copying them over. When you're done, go ahead and hit Start. Now that we've restored the files, we can go to the file manager and see that these have actually been restored. As you can see, this is a pretty simple and effective utility, but there's some things you should consider when you're using this. The most important is that this is not an imager like a Cronus or Windows backup. This is primarily used for data backups, so if you're expecting to backup their entire system, it will do that, but there's no USB boot device that lets you restore to a new hard drive like a Cronus or some of the other imaging backup utilities including the Windows Backup. This is really more about file and configuration backups. This takes care of your data on a working system, which is my preferred approach. When a system crashes or I want to upgrade the hard drive, 
I typically rebuild the system with a new OS and software and then restore the files, which to me has always been more reliable. And this is exactly what this utility does. As this is a free utility, I would suggest giving it a try to see if it works out for you. I've done a lot of videos on backups, especially NAS backups, to different locations, which I'll leave links for in the description below. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.